to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Today I'm coming to you from Cocoa Beach, Florida. Uh, there's perfect waves in Hawaii. Everybody's telling me come uh, to paddle out with them. I'm getting all these text messages, but I'm not in Hawaii. I'm in our Cocoa Beach home and we love it here. We're getting ready to shoot uh, another season of Long Ride Home, so we're gearing up over here and uh, getting ready. One of the things about Long Ride Home is that it actually is... I invite people to be on my uh, the TV show and ride with motorcycles with us, and they go, oh, yeah, it's going to be so fun. And I go, uh-uh. It's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done. And, uh, and it's true. There's a lot of adversity on this ride. We ride long miles, and we uh, have you know, really a lot of challenges are kind of thrown in the midst of us. But in the, in the midst of all of that, it breaks down kind of any facade people have, and we really get to know each other as, as brothers. So... Uh, you know, the thing is, in, in our world, the world is about adversity. The world, uh, Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Um, this world is all, all about being Rocky Balboa. Everything about this world is a challenge. But, you know, there's kind of a funny thing. I, you know, the Hallmark Channel, I watch that with my wife. I never tear up, you know. But when I watch Rocky Balboa, I... I get a lump in my throat, you know, and I kind of tear up because everyone loves a, a hero. Everyone loves a challenge, a, a, someone who faces an, a challenge that's bigger than they can handle, and they overcome it. And the Bible even promises us there's a special crown for those who overcome. And believe me, anybody that's in heaven is an overcomer. Uh, this world is full of adversity and challenge, not to be run away from, but to turn and face it and let that challenge uh, help you. Uh, to become stronger. You know, as an athlete, I know I become stronger uh, when I do my resistance training. I was just leading a, a pilgrimage to Greece, and for two weeks, I didn't get to do any resistance training. I came back like a mushy person, <laughs> not from all the Greek food necessarily, but, you know, resistance training is the key to strength. And so in this world, we have, we will face our resistance. You know, we know in the footsteps of St. Paul, he writes, I think it's in Second Corinthians, he talks about how he was whipped uh, five times uh, by synagogues uh, with the rod. The Old Testament would say, you know, you'd whip, you could, for, for this particular crime, 40, 40 uh, times you can whip them with a rod. And so they would be very careful only to whip, whip someone 39 times just in case they went over. They wouldn't want to break the law, but they don't mind breaking Paul's back. Paul had, went through a lot of adversity. And this is what happened to him before he, became the, he began doing the ministry with Barnabas and traveling before we really even know anything about what he was up to uh, during those 10 years or so uh, that he was kind of isolated. Uh, but it's adversity. But what, what about Paul in, in Philippi when he was, in the, when he was there and they, had, they whipped him uh, 39 times? Actually, no, this was the Romans that, that whipped him with a, uh, not with a rod, but with a whip. And he was thrown into the deepest uh, part of the jail in Philippi. He was thrown... Not just in jail, which is not a pleasant thing. Uh, they, don't, they don't feed you there. The people are, you're kind of at the mercy of the community to throw you food. But Silas, Silas and Paul were put down in the deepest part of that jail. Uh, so where there's not even any, there's a little hole for air to come through. They were chained to the walls. Their legs were chained apart with a, a rod between their ankles. And uh, it's kind of a foul thing to think about, but there's no bathroom facilities. They weren't able to get up and walk around. They're sitting in their own dung and in, in whatever else. It was a filthy, horrible place to be. And so they thought this would be a good time to have church. So they began to worship the Lord. They began to sing God's praises. Uh, and what happened? Uh, the great earthquake came. Uh, the doors were swung open. The chains were broken. And Paul and Silas, instead of fleeing, stayed there and waited for the jailer to come. And the jailer was about to kill himself because he thought all the prisoners had escaped. But Paul said, do yourself no harm. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're all still here. And then, the, and then the jailer and his whole household were converted and baptized. The jailer and his whole household. So that means men, women, servants, babies, children, all of them were baptized. So in the world, you'll have 
adversity, but be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world. And the way we, the way we know we are Christians is because we praise the Lord in all things. Uh, when the, Jew, the people, the children of Israel went into battle, did they send out the cavalry first or was it the archers? Or maybe it was the infantry. Who was, who was first in line when they went into battle? It was the church choir that went into battle. It was those that praised the Lord. And the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That's how you enter in. That's the appropriate protocol when you're about to speak to a king. So uh, in all things, uh, embrace the adversity, embrace the suffering, and, uh, and, and, and it really infuriates the enemy when you praise the Lord. You know, the Bible says the enemy builds a, uh, a trap for me and then falls in it. Uh, why, how does he fall in it? Because when, you, when you're tempted or when you have adversity or there's challenges in your life and you praise the Lord, it's like, oh, no, not again. So, so we have someone on our show today that i uh, really excited to have her on the show. It's going to be the easiest interview I've ever done because she's just <laughs> so full of life and so full of joy. We have Kendra Von Esch with us. Aloha, Kendra. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, Bear. And I'm going to start saying that. People are going to yeah. look at me funny here in Chicago. <laughs> well, you're on, you're on Shalom Media out there, right? You're the, you anchor uh, their news, and you've got a new TV show going on out there. Can, yeah. we tell you, can we tell you the proper way to say Shalom in Hawaiian? Yeah. Shaloha. Shaloha. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in Spain, we say olaha. Anyway, olaha. That's, that's my little personal joke. Yeah, it's not true, it. but you can, yeah. So when I was in Israel, I would say shaloha to everybody. And they're like, what is this? You know? But yeah, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you on. We know that uh, your background is kind of uh, interesting. We know that you know nothing about IT, yet you headed up an IT department for ADP. Is that right? Yeah, not for ADP. I was there um, before I started taking over IT. Oh, okay. okay. I cut my teeth a little bit in the technology world at ADP, but I uh, ended up working for a global environmental company. And yes, I know nothing about technology. Thank goodness for all the people on my team who do and did at the time. But you headed up the IT department. I did. So hysterical. <laughs> yeah, we can vouch for her. We had about a 20-minute challenge getting her Skype working for our video version of this. By the way, if you want to see uh, the chicken uh, in, her, in her teeth that's still stuck there from three days ago, you can watch this YouTube video uh, on the Bear Wozniak channel on YouTube, and you can watch these shows. If you subscribe, you get to see these shows uh, early. Uh, if you go to our deepadventure.com and become a Patreon donor, you get to see them like 10 weeks early. And, and you really want to see it because she has bright, shiny teeth and then two or three pieces of spinach in her teeth. So you really want to... <laughs> You don't want to miss this show. But yeah, the don't, IT... Don't forget to click the bell to subscribe and get the announcements. Because yeah. That's pretty but the IT crowd, so we're, we're really disappointed that you're not familiar with that BBC show, IT Crowd. I know. I know. I'm, I'm familiar with the Silicon Valley one, the one that's on Netflix. And I don't today. know. No, this is, that was this, like swearing every other word. Is that Oh, no, ridiculous. this is just hysterical. The woman who heads it up knows nothing about IT, but she communicates... <laughs> She translates the IT people who know nothing about personal relationships That's to the rest. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. Uh, I, got, I got where I got because of the relationships and the management skills I have. It has nothing. It was. It was a translation. It was a translation between the technology and the business folks. So. Well, there's this, one, there's this one episode where they just, they just keep telling her. Jen, it's not, her name is Jen, by the way. And they just say, it's not for you, Jen. And so when Cindy was overhearing your testimony, my wife was headed out now, but she was overhearing your testimony. She, she's listening to it, and she just says out loud, it's not for you, Jen. So, you, uh, <laughs> so, so if you can be the head of an IT uh, department then, uh, then, and not know anything about IT, then you could probably conquer the world. You can do anything you want. Oh, listen to you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so we're going we're gonna, to uh, uh, get a little bit more into Kendra's story when we get back. But Kendra, uh, what's your, what's your uh, website? It is so creative. It's Kendra dot, Kendra Von Ash dot com. <laughs> Kendra, V-O-N-E-S-H dot com. You're a communications graduate. It, it's obvious. Yeah. You have a, a communications degree. And it's so cool. If I told you the title of her book, it just wouldn't work. So you got to tell us, what's the correct way to pronounce the title of your book? And I'll bring a visual. Yeah. Am I... Catholic? <laughs> a story, uh, a struggle with faith, humility, and surrendering to God. I really kind of kicked and screamed. Yeah, the, the, and the cover is uh, great because there's a little boat, like kind of, kind of like 
shipwrecked on a rock. It's, it, you know, but, but who's in the boat? Someone's well, missing. Nobody. Kendra got yeah, back in the boat. Right Kendra got back in the bark of Peter, returned yeah. to the Catholic Church. The We're Holy gonna find Spirit. The, the Holy back. Spirit up there, Holy Spirit action plan. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll be right back with more with Kendra Von Esch. We're going to get to hear her story. So stay tuned to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to remind everybody, uh, we have a great new website. DeepAdventure.com has a great new website, and you can go there. You can go to our web store, and you can uh, get our books, uh, our Man Cave Seven Virtues Cigar Samplers based on the seven virtues. And uh, we've got the Warrior Rose, all kind of cool stuff. So go to our deepadventure.com, subscribe to our newsletter. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we have our guest today, Kendra Von Esch. So Kendra, let's just get right into it. We, can you tell us a little bit about your your uh, experience with cleansing. No, I mean, can you tell us about your, your journey uh, to, to the Lord? It's, it's, it's a very common thing uh, that, that people, many of us can identify with. So I don't want to get in your way. Can you just let it, let it rip here for a while and let people know what, what, you, what your journey has been? Sure. So uh, I was a confirmed Catholic, air quotes, meaning I was confirmed. I went through all the sacraments, came out on the other end, but didn't have a clue what Catholicism was. My family didn't practice at all. Uh, we were priesters. We were those Christmas Easter goers who stole your seat on those days. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, that's my seat. What are you doing here? Oh, it and, happened to me on the bus in Greece the other day. We were on the pilgrimage. Uh, and, like, we're in the same seat on the bus for four days. And then all of a sudden, what? <laughs> well, you know, we didn't weekend. know what to do. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. <laughs> So needless to say, um, my family really didn't practice. We didn't talk about Jesus or religion, except on Saturdays when I was getting in the car to go to CCD. And my mom would say, do you guys have any CCD homework? And so we're doing it in the car. Or we're doing it over cereal. And, and so the bottom line is this culture absolutely raised me 100, 100 percent. And all I wanted to do in my life was make money make money and, you know, have a prestigious job, climb that corporate ladder. I went to college, like you mentioned, uh, communications degree. I just went because everyone was going. I had no real aspirations to be anything specific other than someone who made a lot of money. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I went, I uh, received my communications degree, came out on the other end and uh, headed down that, that corporate ladder climb and became a leader in IT technology for uh, like upper management or executive level over the past 20 years. That's so, a lot of um, pressure. That, that is a ton of pressure. Uh, I cannot tell you. You would think, here I am thinking happiness is money, materialism, things, prestige. Oh, and let's not forget all about that hedonistic pleasure lifestyle. Me, 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 me. I mean, I was a party freak. And why am I wanting to change my being so much if I'm so happy, you know, if, if this world tells me that all this money and this stress. You're supposed to feel happy, right? Yeah, supposed to feel. So I used to say to myself, it's okay that you don't sleep. It's okay that you're grinding your teeth and you can barely move your neck. It's okay. It's okay. At least you don't have financial issues, you know, so buck up, Bunky, and get on with life. So that's what I was doing until I got a phone call. And that was from my dad's girlfriend. And she said, hey, your father is going into the hospital tomorrow for a quadruple bypass surgery. And I was blown away. I mean, my dad, you know, like you, in shape, works out. There's no uh, symptoms at all. And it's a quadruple bypass. So I was freaking out. Needless to say, I probably prayed more in those 12, 15, 18 hours before he went into that surgery than I had in my whole life. Mm. And I think that... I think that that was where I opened up the door for God because I did have a prayer life, but it was just a one-way asking train. Hey, God, can you do this for me? Can you make this boy like me? Can you get me this job? Can you have me keep this job? You know, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so in the end, it was uh, it was not a relationship. I did not understand who Jesus was. As a matter of fact, I just thought Jesus was God's son. Didn't know he was God. Had zero mm. clue of the Holy Trinity. Mm. No idea that the Eucharist was the real presence, any of that stuff. Mm. So needless to say, when, uh, when I um, prayed and prayed and prayed, I said, Jesus, please, please, just help 
my father get through this because we're all going to suffer if he doesn't get better fast. <laughs> you know, he's just not a guy that sits around, uh, you know, and does nothing very well. He can't so, make it. Then we're all, we're, none of us are going to make it. right? Exactly. So okay. Exactly. So needless to say, he came out with a miraculous recovery. Seriously. He was back on ice skates. He, he coached ice skates. In, in, yeah. Yeah. At 70, he was out on yeah. ice skates and uh, coaching hockey with them uh, a month later crazy crazy fast mm. and i was one of those nine lepers that never went back and thank god i just went about right life. you know I, I you know we were on the trip in greece and there was a per person fell really hurt their ankle and we prayed for her and then she seems then she's walking around and doing fine and, and I, I i looked at everybody everybody's thinking like well i guess it wasn't that serious of an injury well wait a minute maybe god answered your prayer we should be thanking him you know yeah. a lot of times we just go oh i guess maybe it wasn't that big a deal and here it's an answer to prayer and you forget to praise the lord Mm. Exactly. So you would think everyone's like, oh, so that was the big moment that got you back into the church. And no, I went a month later and all of a sudden I just kept thinking about my dad and his health. And of course, I'm always worried about my body, my weight. I've struggled with it my entire life. Join the crowd. And, oh, gosh. So I looked at my husband and I said, look, we're packing on an extra 15, 20 pounds here. I think we need to do a diet and I think we need to do a cleanse. Have you ever done a cleanse before? Yes. More it's than horrible, once. <laughs> what a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, if you stick with it long enough, you know. Yeah, it's just so, very, very draining, I would say. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> mm. I don't know how I got my husband to do it with me, seriously, but he agreed. And um, while I was reading the book, there was a piece of pie. There was a pie chart. And in the pie were little segments of your life. And mm. one of those pieces of the pie said spirituality. Mm. And I interpreted that as religion, you know? So yeah. in my mind, I thought, geez, I've got nothing going on in this piece of the pie. All the other yeah. ones are pretty good. So I decided at that point in time, God put in my heart, go to church. But I'm not going to that Catholic church. I hate that place. <laughs> it's boring and... Yeah, it's boring. I want to sleep in on Sundays. I don't want to change my life. I don't what is all this robes church. about? I mean, you yeah. know... I mean, yeah. I want to go somewhere where there's like, you know, people singing and dancing. And, I want and there's, a, there's a, a, a guy on a cross up there. I don't need yeah. to be reminded about that. Exactly. Especially right? the ones that show them all bloody and everything. That's yeah. Worse, you know, yeah. You know, but needless to say, that night, um, my family, we have Easter Saturday. So we have mm. a holy Saturday party. And then we let the, the we have a lot of divorces in my family. So, probably, so you had a holy Saturday party. Yes. Holy never... Saturday party. Because we're going to start the cleanse on Easter. Oh, you know, yeah. I don't course. know it's the biggest feast day ever, right? But I'm <laughs> going to go ahead and cleanse that day. So everyone's over at my house. I always host Easter. And um, I end up telling everyone, guys, I got to go to bed because it's 1130 and I'm going to church tomorrow. You should have seen the faces on everyone in my mm. family. Mm. They, a couple of them looked at me and said, why? <laughs> mm. you know? like, what are you doing that for? Mm. And I said, oh, la, 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 and I went on about the book and everything. And um, they, they said, well, where are you going to go to church? And I said, I'm going to go to this big box church where the police officers are directing traffic because mm -hmm. it must be good because there's a mm. lot of people there. Mm. And then all of a sudden, in my entire non-practicing Catholic family, they all look at me and they're like, but why aren't you going to the Catholic church? You're Catholic. And I'm mm. like, hello, hypocrites, you know, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going. I gave them rattled off all the other reasons. I'd probably get struck down by lightning the minute I walk in. Mm. And sure enough, by the end of the night, like another 15 minutes, I found the closest Catholic church. And, and, and on 2013 Easter was when I stepped foot back into mm. the church. Mm. Yeah, six, about six, a little over six years ago. And how long had it been since you'd been in a church? <sighs> Decades. I wasn't even, when I, when I left and I moved out on my own, I wasn't even um, going to Christmas or Easter Mass. I was doing nothing. It's a culture so, shock, isn't it? I mean, really. It, yeah. And I used to think that's not good uh, promo, you know, to have guys wearing robes and the guy on the cross up there. And, you know, we got to lighten things up in here. But actually, it's a culture shock because the Catholic Church is 2,000 years old. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not changed its faith or its doctrine or its moral teaching. You know, it's... But it's like kind of a culture shock for people, you know, to walk into a Catholic church. And there's, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Even when you've been before, I can't imagine people that haven't been in the church before and then going and testing it out. I mean, that's how I felt. I was well, scared let, let, of that. Let me ask you a question. Uh, you know, my mother is a convert. 
Uh, she went through a real tough time when she was young. You know, her, her uh, mother died in childbirth, and then she oh. was kind of shipped around from family members because her father had already left her. She was a Lutheran in a small town in South Dakota. Uh, but she found real comfort when she would go inside the Catholic Church. There was something really unique. She couldn't, but her hand, she couldn't, she didn't understand it, but she felt a real peace and a comfort. When you went in, although it might have been shocking, I'm just curious, did you, feel, did, did you sense something of the presence of God when you went in, or was it just a, a foreign environment for you by that time? That day, I think I was just more concerned about not making an idiot out of myself, even though I, because I started off on the way wrong foot. <laughs> when I walked in there, at least I knew, okay. Were you, did you sit in the front? No, of course not. Are you kidding me? I was in the back row, and I was super jazzed when I walked into that church and I saw a spot in the back. I was like. So you were in the sinner's row back in the back. <laughs> Where yeah, I, sit. Like, <laughs> I don't want anyone to see me, you know, stand and kneel and do the wrong thing at the wrong right, time. Right, 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 right. And so there. you got about 20 seconds to tell us where it all went wrong. I bet you took it into the ditch at some point. What, what happened? Yeah, I did. So I'm in the back pew, and I was really kind of nervous. There was some other guy in the pew with me. And the priest was walking up the front of the church to the back. He turned behind me and the other guy, and check this out. He goes, hello, people in the back row. <laughs> and so through there, like me and the other guy were laughing i'm thinking this we shouldn't be laughing here you know but we thought it was kind of cool and honestly it just gave me this relief you know mm-hmm. like oh my gosh who thought that priests actually had a personality or would say anything <laughs> to you you know so i'm feeling well, pretty good at that time you know and then he gets up to the altar turns around and the old you know peace be with you comes out and i'm thinking all right i know this one and i'm like and also with you and that was where everything changed to me, with me. If I felt God there at that time, I certainly all came inward. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they're not saying, and also with you. What are they You saying? missed your line. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when, did they, when did they change that, and why wasn't I notified? <laughs> you didn't get the press release. We're talking to yeah. Kendra Von, is it Von, Von is how you say it, Con, yeah. Kendra Von Esch, KendraVonEsch.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. You can find out more about where she went wrong. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, my producers always reminds me to tell people, go to deepadventure.com and become a Patreon donor to our ministry. You know, we don't receive any funding from EWTN for this radio show. And our TV show, about a fourth of it is funded by EWTN. Otherwise, it's funded by, by miracles, basically. But we would love to have you become part of our pack and kind of become part of our uh, ride with us as we, as we do our ministry. So if you go there, there's different levels of Patreon donorship that you can uh, enter into. And anyone that gives uh, receives a free copy of, of my latest book. But there's a particular uh, level of donating. At $25 a month, you get access to all of Long Ride Home TV, all of season one, all of season two before it even begins to air on EWTN. And as we are editing season three, as we get each episode done, you get that done. You get that about a year before it even airs on the network. So if you're a fan of Long Ride Home, become a donor and not, not just be a fan, but be part of our ministry. And $25 a month gets you that. Plus, you get to get all of uh, the Bear Wozniak Adventures radio shows on video as they are produced. So you get them anywhere from a month to three months early, earlier than it airs on EWTN. So we need your help. Uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and become a patron uh, for the ministry. And uh, we'll just keep on... Uh, blessing you and giving to you. Don't forget also we're having our big uh, uh, donors luau in Cocoa Beach, Florida. I think it's going to be the first weekend of December. We may end up with a, a cruise slash retreat uh, to the Bahamas afterwards. We're working on it right now. So go there, subscribe to our newsletter. you find out all about it. We're talking to Kendra Von Esch, um, an expert in computers. <laughs> she was actually a, a director of IT for a big corporation. And uh, uh, really not being an IT expert at all, but definitely being a people expert and was able to kind of help bridge the gap between nerds and, uh, and normal people, as they say in the IT crowd on BBC. Uh, by the way, I got to tell you, Kendra, you know where the IT department is on this IT crowd on BBC? The basement? It's in the dungeon. Yeah, it's <laughs> way down there. It's like That's in Nome. Yeah, it's, they're just kind of isolated down there. 
It's just way, 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 way down there. You're going to be so sorry you've missed out on this show because we watch it. We, we watch uh, an episode of it at least once a week. We, I've seen that whole series numerous, right. numerous you times. You totally so. talked me into it. I am we, definitely checking it out, and then I'll send you a note and let you know. Yeah, yeah. So Kendra's here with us, and she's sharing with us her testimony about her first time back in going to the Catholic Church on an Easter Sunday. Decades of sinning between her last Mortal time sinning. Not just there. Sinning. And, uh, and you're in the back row and you're feeling kind of out of place. Um, and yet the, the priest kind of comes back to your row and says, hello, people in the back row. And, and there was just kind of this, this little connection. What happened? What, what, what happened to you? Did you decide you would never go back to that church again? Or what happened? Yeah, so at the end, um, another. so I, again, I was just freaked out and I'm clueless. I've never looked through the missile. I've never followed anything. So when I actually would attend church, all I would do was try to be entertained by some kid, a bad hairdo, a bad outfit, something like that. You know, like get me, get this 45 minutes to an hour over as fast as I, as yeah. I can. Yeah. Um, but that day I just, you know, followed everybody. I was leaning over the front to look at the page number. I didn't realize that the page numbers were up on the front, you know, mm. find out where you are. I always wonder what those numbers were for, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's now interesting. Yeah. And then, you know, there's dates on the bottom. So now, yeah, and I'm stumbling along because I'm all by myself there. I've never been to church alone. And then it came time to receive Holy Communion, and I freaked out because I didn't know what I was supposed to say. I'm thinking, okay, it's got to be amen, right? I mean, there was a part of me that thought it was thank you for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how long it's been. Yeah. So I did say amen. It was all good. And then I've never heard the announcements before, never even knew there were announcements before, because in my family, we would be, you know, heading out the door to the car to beat the traffic after. Yeah, right. The Lord, right? Well, you so, know, you know, our, what our priest says about that is, you know, uh, people leaving dinner early. There was one other person that did that. Judas. That's a good, that's a good way to say that. <laughs> Once he said that, I'd never have left early again. That's, I'm stealing that one. That <laughs> yeah. was good. I like that. I like that. Um, so I'm sitting down, I'm like, okay, announcements. And all of a sudden I hear next Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday, we will have confession after our two o'clock mass. And for a moment, honestly, Bear, everything just kind of stopped. And it was the first time that I ever thought about my mortality. I kind of sat there thinking, whoa, confession, like, how long has it been? Carry the one, you know, 26 mm. years since I've been to confession. Now you've been doing a cleanse I've with been your doing, husband. I just But started, now there's definitely. like a real cleanse about to right. happen. Okay. No, nope. you know what? I never even, I never even put those together. Um, and I'm gonna have to steal that one too. Brilliant. So I'm gonna, I'm Brilliant. Better start taking some notes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I heard confession and I thought, oh my gosh, if I believe a half of a half of a half of a mustard seed of this Catholic faith, then I am so going to hell. Mm. I have multiple, multiple mortal sins on my soul. Mm. And it just freaked me out for a second because I really never thought about heaven, hell, eternity, you know, what happens mm -hmm. when I die, that kind of stuff. You just so, thought you were going to get a participation trophy and go to heaven. I just figured, you know, God, as I've had these conversations with my father, is mm -hmm. ultimately, you know, merciful. So mm -hmm. I didn't, I haven't killed anybody. I should yeah. be able to get into that. So that's heaven. not faith. That's presumption, isn't it? Correct. Especially in that's light true. of a, a, a father giving his son's life for you and a, mm -hmm. and a man giving his life for you and God exactly. giving his life for you. That's presumption, not faith. And we don't, we don't get to heaven by, we don't, it's so many people think you get to heaven just by, just kind of like by not killing anybody, so to speak. And, Heaven isn't a participation trophy. Jesus said, narrow is the way, and few there be that follow thereon. And so the, the Holy Spirit brings conviction. Satan brings condemnation, but the Holy Spirit brings conviction. It's two different parts of a trial, isn't it? Yeah. There's the part when you're convicted, and there's the part where you're condemned, right, after you're convicted of the sin. The Holy Spirit brings conviction, uh, and, and, and through what Jesus did on the cross, the Lord brings forgiveness. Well, you're going through this period of real conviction now. You're, you're like, you're cornered. The Holy Spirit's yeah. speaking to you. And it's yeah. a good thing. It is Miserable, a good but thing. it's a good thing. Okay. It go. is. Okay. So, but, but I did not decide at that moment that I was going to go. I just, you know, thought about my life and death and heaven and hell and hmm. And your but participation trophy waiting for you. 
Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if I believe in this. Uh, I better figure out what this Catholic thing is pretty quick, right? Okay. That's kind of my mind. All right. My mindset. Because if it's not true, then I can go back to my life and not change and live for me and be selfish. Right. And like right. So, and, you know, at that point in my life, why wouldn't I? It seems to be an easier way to live. But mm. boy, was I wrong. Not, not, so not meaningful, but easy. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So um, I decided that I was just going to go home, got in the car. I felt different. I felt lighter. You know, I really did. I was like, hey, that wasn't so bad. I'll go back next I week. punched that ticket. That was good. Yeah, I did it. Yay. And then next Sunday I went um, in the morning. I go first thing in the morning. And it was Divine Mercy Sunday. And then it was a beautiful day in Chicago. My husband and I went golfing. And I said, I, okay, remember I told you my neck was hurting so bad. I was dying mm. my feet under so much stress. Oh, that was a constant thing. Okay. Yeah, it was a constant thing. This, it was worse at this point in time because we were merging three different companies and you don't need three chief information officers. You know, right. I've been there. There's I a lot did, of, yeah. a lot I of talking over the, uh, over the cubicles and whisperings and not a lot of work getting done and everyone worried about their jobs. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what happened with me. So I couldn't move my neck and I told my husband and I go golfing and, you know, leaning over and golfing is probably not the, the worst best possible thing to do. <laughs> right. So I said to him, I said, listen, honey, I'm going to go home. I'm just going to lay down. I need to put like my head on a pillow. So I got home and guess what? Out of the blue, I don't know the Holy Spirit. I don't know God speaks to you. I hear confession after two o'clock mass. Mm. I'm like, where the heck did that come from? Mm. You know, and I roll over with my neck and I look at the clock and I'm like, hey, it's one o'clock. Mm. I can make it. Maybe it'll make my neck feel better. I don't know. You know, so I decided right. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And I That's just so out. cool that you responded to that. Oh, I didn't yeah. know. I didn't have a clue about the examination of mm. conscience. And I haven't gone since con confirmation. And mm. at that point in time, it was just a big line of kids, you know, and, and a screen and two chairs. And I, so I've never really... I don't know where the confessional is. I don't know what it looks like. I'm thinking it's this mm -hmm. little brown box. You don't there. remember yeah. what you're supposed to say? Yeah, totally. I had no clue about the examination of conscience. Even when so, I go, even when I go now, Kendra, we're going to take a break here in a moment because we want to hear all about your sins But uh, <laughs> after our break. But, you know, even when I go to confession now, and I, I've gone to confession a lot of different places, like in cars with a priest or in the middle totally. of a desert or... Or wherever, because I. Uh, uh, but I always say, "Will you please help me to say the words right?" Because I always get nervous. It's like I say that confession is like a skydiving. You know, you get really nervous before you jump out of an airplane. You know, you're like, Ugh. and then you see someone when they jump out of an airplane, you see that moment of fear, and then w the moment they jump out, 99% of the people, this great look of exhilaration comes over them. Uh, so you go from this very fearful place before you go into the confessional. And there's people right now that are listening to this that are thinking, I haven't gone to confession in 10 years or 20 years, and they're going to make that decision to go. I want you to know you're going to be a little bit worried, a little bit afraid. Uh, you're going to be in that airplane, and you're going to see more and more people jump out of the airplane. You're going to be in that line getting up to confession, and there's less and less people in front of you. And now it's your time to jump out. Just go in and tell the priest, I'm, I, I'm all nervous. I don't know really how to make a good confession. Will you help me? And then they'll help you because once you make that jump, you feel like you can conquer the world. Once you've made, once you've jumped out of an airplane, or once you've you've gone to confession, it's almost the, the same feeling of exhilaration uh, and peace. We'll be right back with Kendra Von Esch. She's going to tell us all of the sins she confessed. We don't have enough time, but we'll try to get them all in when we come back from this break. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have Kendra Von Esch with us. She's about to tell us all of the sins that she confessed when she went back to confession for the first time in a couple of decades. I got to tell you, Kendra, we were filming a, uh, a show we have on EWTN. It was one of my surf retreats that we give. It's not the Long Ride Home TV show. It's different, something different. And everybody's mic'd, you know, on, with laughs. And after Mass, we had confession. And one of the guys that was in the show went into the, the little, uh, and we had like a little covering there to go to confession and he went to confession when he came back out I had all the guys standing there with their arms crossed very judgmentally and laughing and pointing at him said we heard the whole thing Aww. of course we had turned it off but <laughs> but at, right at that moment he can he, he made he, he committed another sin and had to go back in and confess again. <laughs> ah, <that's great. laughs> but so tell us this this thing about the confessional 
for so many people is the moment when everything changes in their life. Tell us, tell us about that. You're standing in line and now you're going to go to confession and tell us about that. So I'm not in line. Check this out. So I end up grabbing my pen, my eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and I just start writing because I'm, mm. right, mm. I'm not going to be able to do this in the confessional. And then I flip it over. I write. I fill out the whole both sides, not in real big print. I, right I now, if you want to read her sins, they're all in her book. <laughs> Am I Catholic? <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, um, yeah, and I was scared, too. I mean, all I want to say to anybody that's watching this who is fearful of going to confession, I cannot tell you how many people I've had this conversation with and how many people have gone and have called me back and said, thank you so much for sharing because you gave me the courage to go in. Mm -hmm. I Let me just say this. It'd be easier for me to list the, the mortal sins that I haven't committed, and that mm. is I haven't murdered anyone. Well, I know a man, Eric Van Eric Wardrum, who's the head of Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Club, I'll be with him in about six weeks, who was in, in jail for murdering a man. And there was a priest in there uh, hearing confessions. And anybody else want to hear confessions? And he went through the, whole, the prison, and, and Eric just thought, there's no way I'm worthy of, of this. And then finally, in desperation, he yelled out, Father, I want to make a confession. And the priest came back and said, uh, what do you need to confess? And he said, Father, there isn't one of those I haven't done. I'm in, I'm in prison for murdering a man. And that confession broke, broke the hardness and the fear in his heart, and God's love just poured through, and now he's got this incredible ministry. And, and the priest, the way the priest broke this, and I'm just saying this for those of you who may feel shame, the priest said, well, you know, Paul was a murderer. Uh, David was a murderer. Moses was a murderer. Um, and God forgave them. And so anyone that's out there listening to this, you don't have to wait for Thursday afternoon or whatever that your local church has confession. You can call the rectory right now and say, and schedule an appointment to go and, and be with the priest and, and have this great breakthrough. But um, Kendra, I'm sorry, you got you got this last segment. It's all yours. I won't interrupt. You got seven okay, minutes okay. to bring it. Bring this horse into the barn. Tell okay. us what happened when you went in there. What were all your sins again? <laughs> no, just tell it. Just tell us your experience. <laughs> all of them, but not murder. Okay. So you know, yeah, again, I write them all down and. Um, and I get there early, and it's a it's a Hispa Hispanic mass is at two is at one o'clock. It's ending at mm. at two or something, and they're all in there. I mean, it is packed. I loved it. I was like, how many people are at mass here? Mm -hmm. it's a wonderful thing in their culture. I love the Latino masses. Yeah. yeah. So I end up going. I find this this priest, and I looked at him, and I said, you know, I, I have no idea if confession is going to be coming or what. And he says, yeah, they take a while to get out of here. So just, you know, just hang around. It'll be after two. And once they start leaving, I said, okay, go outside. I sit down and, you know, they're all just still hanging around and talking. So I went La back familia, in. right? right exactly. Amen. And then I went back into the church and I realized, like, I don't even know where I'm going. You know, like, where are the confessionals? I don't see any of these dark boxes or anything. So I saw that priest again, and I asked him, I'm like, hey, I'm really sorry to bother you, but where, where is confession? And so he told me to stand over in the line, look at the light up on the top. It wasn't your traditional confessional booth. And then I'm standing, I'm the first one there, and then I have this fear, like, wait a minute. That guy could be the guy that I have to confess to. <laughs> Like, there goes my anonymity. I am totally right. known, right? Yeah, I'm thinking, right. And I panicked, like, oh, my gosh, this, this guy's going to know who I am. Right. And for those who call and get the confessional appointment, ask for the priest to get into the confessional before you get there so that they don't <laughs> see you or anything. You can do that. I've done that before, yeah. too. Needless to say, I sit down and I kneel down. It is that priest. He goes into the confessional. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe this is the guy, you know? And so I and kneel yet down. And he's Persona Christi, right? Right. And I don't yeah. even know that. I have yeah. no idea that that's supposed to be Jesus and the priest in there. I have no clue. All I know is I better get over, get this over with. And so I'm kneeling down and I'm kind of a comedian type of person. and I'm feeling really embarrassed. So I just kind of say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Get a load of this. It's been 26 years since my last confession. Like I'm some sort of a comedian or something, you know. Mm. And then I wait and he and he says, welcome home. I'm telling you, the tears that came out of my eyes and my mouth and my body, I mean, I was just a mess, mm. a mess. Mm. I, the most beautiful welcome home, two words I've ever heard in my life, in the most peaceful whisper. And then I just bawl and I can't read my paper. I mean, tears are streaming, <laughs> streaming down my face. The lump in my throat is so big mm. that I really can't even say any of my, mm -hmm. you know, my stuff. So I think I'm in there probably... 
20, 30 minutes. I'm the first one in line. And we're talking through a lot of stuff and all that jazz. And he gets finally down to absolving me of my sins. Mm. And this was yet the last signal for me to lose my mind, right? Mm. I started bawling. And then, oh my gosh, Bear, this is the coolest thing. When you say that confession is a game changer, it's a pivotal moment in people's mm -hmm. faith journey, it, it was that for me. So I actually floated out of my body. Amen. Yeah, and I looked down at the back of my head. I can picture it exactly. My hair was in a twist. I was wearing a pink golf mm. pullover. My shoulders were shrugging from crying so much. Mm. And I had this just amazing, amazing peace. And then when I started like coming back into my body, this like warm waterfall of ooze. I, I, I've described it the exact same. It's a warm waterfall of love. Yeah, ooze, I say. My body it's just It's a kind physical of... love. You feel yeah. it spiritually I've never, and physically. I, I wish yeah. I could bottle it and get it to you and all of that, but it was, it was extraordinary. You had and an encounter with Jesus Christ. Yeah. It was a supernatural, what in the heck is happening? You could never deny it ever in your life again, right? Mm -mm. And we, and God wants us to have an encounter. And him. I can't believe he did it with me the second Sunday. I'm back in my faith. And, you're in, and, you're, and you went to, if you seek me, I will let you find me. Mm -hmm. And then he says, if you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. I know what I have in store for you. Plans for peace not destruction, a future reserved for you, full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me. God hides from us just enough so if you really don't want to find him, you won't. But if you do want to find him, you will. But it's not for those who kind of sort of seek him. Diligently seek him. And the Catholic Church encourage you, encourages you to have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ and the, the Eucharist and the confessional. And so then you've got two minutes to tell us what happened. So, uh, yeah, so then I'm, I come back into my body. I have this liquid love, this amazing feeling. Exactly, and liquid love. From, exactly. Yeah, from like my toes all the way up to my body. Yeah. I start Every body. dark corner was filled with light. Yeah, I, I was like, someone plugged me in. Someone plugged me into the wall, and I was literally, my, I was busting out of my skin. Yeah. I and then I end up, you know, I leave. I end up hugging the priest because I figured, why not? He knows who I am. <laughs> yeah. well, I was in a room with a curtain, you know, and so mm -hmm. I just walked around the curtain, and I think I scared the living daylights out of him. I didn't think he expected me. His <laughs> face was priceless, priceless. Mm -hmm. And then I leave, and oh, my gosh, Bear, there is a line all the way out the door through the narthex <laughs> around the corner. I must have been in there a good 20 or 30 minutes. Oh, but my goodness. I didn't care, and I had to have been a mess. There was no Kleenex in there, mm -hmm. so I was like, right. you know, <laughs> open everything on my nose and my face and everything but i got into my car and i sat down and i cried for a good 10 minutes i floated out of that church and i said what was that <laughs> like right what was that oh my gosh i have got to figure out what this catholic thing is about because that was yeah. something way not of this earth and right. that's the holy praise put, god yeah put the thirst of figuring out what this catholic thing is all about and I have to tell you, Bear, I just became a fiend, an mm, addict. Yeah. Hungry, oh, thirsty. Oh, I couldn't stop. More, more truth, I more love, more hungry. prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah. Bad. Bad. Yeah. I ended up spending half my day online researching Catholic stuff. But boy, am I happy. I'm Catholic so... stuff. Is it? Can you Google Catholic stuff? And uh, not that's exactly. That's what comes up. <laughs> well, you guys, you know, we've kind of run out of time. Kendra, uh, we, don't, we don't have another slot for you to come back and visit us. Anytime soon, but we got to have you back. I'll have Kim connect with you. Got to have you back so we can figure. So we really for only one thing, and that is to see if you ever watched IT Crowd on <laughs> okay. BBC. But yeah. it's a great testimony. You know, they're, they're, God wants to have a personal encounter with you. If you're listening right now, all you have to do is say, "Jesus, I'm not sure if you're real or if you're not real, but if you're who these people say you are, I want all of you, and I want you to have all of me. I open up my heart. I surrender all I am to your love, to your will." Uh, Jesus, come into my heart. Uh, I know you've been knocking on the door quietly. You've been knocking on the door loudly. Lord, come into my heart and let me uh, join in this great, this great feast of, of your love. Thank you, Kendra. It's KendraVonesh.com, K-E-N-D-R-A-V-O-N-E-S-H. She loves to speak at Lagatus Groups, and she speaks all over the country, so you got to have her on your, you got to put her on your list of speakers. Thank you, Kendra. 
Thank you so much, Bear. God bless you and all you do. Now you're on Shalom Great. Media. You're on Shalom Media. So how do how, how did I teach you to say sh- Shalom in Hawaii? Shaloha. Shaloha. We'll see <laughs> oh, you guys next way. week. Sorry. Shaloha. Amen. Yeah, thank, thank you, Kendra. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. Until next week, uh, we'll may God bless you and Viva Cristo Rey. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 